using open board to structure interactive lessons. Uh, we will have a little bit of a warm up. Come in. Welcome. Come in. Have some coffee if you like. We're just getting started right now. Um, Thanks so much for coming. We, oh, okay. And, uh, oh yeah, so we'll have a little conversation to warm up about using technology in the classroom, what is good about it and what's not so good, and uh, what it's like to use a whiteboard. We will then go through two basic concepts, and they'll try to be sort of illustrative, uh, which is using OpenBoard as a rich container for lesson materials. And then uh, the other one is using OpenBoard as a lesson structuring tool. So we'll basically run through a piece of an Italian uh, elementary lesson, and you can kind of track how this happens. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, I guess a little piece of what I wrote disappeared, but it'll say, it's supposed to say identify uh, one way in which open board can be useful for your language. So we'll have that as a discussion as well. OK. So let us take six minutes and discuss in groups these two questions. The first is, what are the top advantages and top drawbacks to using technology in the language classroom? Really just basic things, like one or two words. Um, so you'll have six minutes to discuss it with your partner. And then the second question, and this is something I'm a little more interested in, is have you ever used an interactive whiteboard in a language class, and what have you used it for? So I know that some of you have, some of you maybe haven't had the pleasure of being in a classroom with an interactive whiteboard, so you might have to imagine it, but that's what I want you to discuss. So I think here we've got two, two, and three. It could be three. Is that okay? Three. And uh, let's start mm -hmm. the timer. Absolutely. Okay, the, the clock is ticking. You've got six minutes. So, we're here.
which means that my text is scrolling. Yeah, yeah, And then they can't see it. And they said they love, they like so much better on the blackboard because things stay up. Right? I right. was like, boom, 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 and it's up there. And so like, if they don't get, you know, they have more time to copy it down and to refer to it. Oh my God. I think the entire language department is there. Oh, no worries. That's that's true. Yes, but you have oh. Grappa. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You can join anywhere if you want to join. Unmute. Okay. Full <laughs> <Wow. laughs> years of technology. Yeah, I know that guy. So, oh, I was so concerned about that sound, Chris. I, I was ready to duck yeah. and cover. <laughs> I don't know if you can change that, but um, all right, let's talk about these two topics. And let me pull up my pencil. So. Let's just really, in very basic terms, and we'll do this fast, what are, the, what are the top advantages and the top drawbacks to having technology in the language classroom? So let's, let's take a line and we'll make this one, you know, the plus side and this one, the minus side. So yeah, let's hear it. You can well, my problem, because I try to use this in my classroom, my middle school that I teach in at Columbia, okay. Um, is that it's a risky. Like if something goes wrong, uh -huh. by the time I get the technician or somebody to so that's on the figure this side. out. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the right. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's so well done. <laughs> Some people just like to watch done, the And the kids are all over the place. Technical issue. Yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah, tech failures. And really the problem with the tech failure is the time that it takes. Yeah. It mm -hmm. takes away time. Yeah. So time. Uh, sick, we, can, we can call it. Okay. I'm sick. Um, other, other, other minuses. Yeah, but, but we were discussing too much information. Okay. Too much information. Wait for who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too much going on. Uh, difficult to figure out. You know, you, a lot of extraneous information yeah. that doesn't help with learning. The paper lovers. Okay, people, people love lovers that they need paper. Uh, they don't like to spend in too much fetishes. time. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it kind of has an evanescent quality. Um, so, all right, paper. Go ahead. I There's have a question too. here. Yeah. Um, also, that a lot of the times we get too excited about working with technology and we go overboard mm -hmm. when analog would have been just fine. Okay, so tech for tech's sake. So yeah. Mostly no. it's <laughs> Um, do you agree, David, on your side? Well, we were discussing some of the advantages to using technology, and one oh, of them was that. We're talking about disadvantages. What are, what are some advantages? Positive and general. It allows uh, you know students to experience the material in different ways, so multiple modalities, uh, depending on yeah. you know what it is that you're teaching. So. Yeah, and I mean, I, I had listed that as both a positive and a negative, yes. because you want to present material in multiple modes, um, but that can sometimes um, not be helpful for students, um, and you might not know when, um, if, there, if you have a student who can't access the material through a certain mode. So, for example, uh, if somebody's had a concussion and they can't look at screens, um, now you're a multimodality is gone and you might not know so you have to it's not that you the technology has failed um it's that you have to always be prepared for it not to be useful in the way that you think depending on you know who you have and how they can access things so mm -hmm. yeah so it it, it can be a, a double-edged sword what you think is this great rich feature rich thing can uh, not not work for everybody um, okay, so any more, anything on the plus side? Yeah. Well, I can use it also, let's say, to visit virtually places that we're talking about. Yes. Sure. That's very important, and I find the children very engaged with them. They like it, and they, you know, they feel that they have experienced. Oh, they know what we're talking about. So, yeah, you can go beyond the language classroom. Right. Or whatever classroom you're, you're in. Uh, Sam, uh, did you have anything? Uh, we, no? we, the big one we, we mentioned was also a connection to the target culture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, 
there's much more that you can do with culture when you are accessing technology. Okay, so let's get a little more specific and talk about whiteboards. And um, so I guess the first question is, have you ever used an interactive whiteboard? Who, let's have a show of hands. Who's used an interactive whiteboard before in a class? Okay, okay. All right, who's, who's not used it? The one we did raised. <laughs> okay, I, I just assumed. But you never know. You gotta check. Um, okay, so doesn't count if you use it only to project your power. Okay, so this is an interesting point. Some people have used the interactive whiteboards not interactively. So you just use it as a screen. A big oh, yes. Screen. I, 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 yes, yes, I have misused. I have misused a smart board. That wasn't on there. <laughs> okay. Um, so for people who have only used it as a screen, why have you not used it interactively? What it, can we first establish what is inter use it interactively before we answer the question? Sure. So <laughs> by this, I am meaning that you are writing on it, you are doing things with the board that require the touch capability, as opposed to just using it as a screen. Oh, as OK. A right. Yeah, um, yeah Sonia. Uh, just an example, and if it happened yesterday in my class on that, you know, sometimes we watch YouTube videos. So, so when we watch YouTube videos, students ask us kind of the, uh, the idea of you have little or less control over the speed and everything. So once you kind of highlight subtitles mm -hmm. on the screen mm -hmm. with all these things, and then it's kind of, you know, that's a surprise. That is interactive, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So that's a that's a great interactive use of the whiteboard. Yeah, we'll do um, yeah. Did you have that? No. Okay. I can use it when I teach text. Close reading. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can when you have an interactive whiteboard, you can um, you know you can draw attention to elements of a text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can interact with the text in various ways. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, for text, it's great. Okay, so um, I wanna talk a little bit about an application called OpenBoard. Mm -hmm. And this is an application that we have on all of the distance uh, learning rooms here at Columbia and in the downstairs classrooms in the Language Resource Center. Oh. I believe that at the Yale Center for Language Study, you have this application installed on the uh, whiteboard in the distance classrooms. Is that correct, David? Yes. Um, and then yeah, at Cornell, I believe you have an uh, interactive whiteboard, but I don't know if it has OpenBoard on it. I don't think OpenBoard is what we're using now, but I'm, I'm watching. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, there are sort of some. So the nice thing about OpenBoard is it's uh, free and it is regularly updated and it has different tiers of interactivity. So you can use it really as a just a, a whiteboard where you can write and you can draw. You can upload videos or images to it. So you can interact with those videos and images. You can upload a series of uh, images as I have done. So I've uploaded about 40 PDFs all in a row and I'm scrolling through them as if it were a PowerPoint, but it's an annotatable PowerPoint. Um, and then it has some more advanced features as well. Uh, it has the ability to save a document and keep it, and you can scroll through that document. Uh, it also has a thing called the library, which has, which you can see on the on the board. It has, it's sort of a storehouse for audio, movies, pictures, animations, and then a cool thing called applications, which is of which the little countdown timer is a part. Yeah. So adding an application is a way to make it a little more interactive. And then within applications, there's another, uh, another thing called interactivities, which is something that you can directly interact with, like a game, for example, that you can program and have students do different things with. So the nice thing about OpenBoard is it's extremely simple to use at the base level, but you can expand your use of it and do different things with it as you become more comfortable with the environment. So that's OpenBoard. And I wanted to give you a little 
example of the kind of thing you can do with open board. And I'm going to run through this. It's taken from a lesson that I did in an Italian class. There was a distance class with between Yale and Singapore. And it was on the objects of a classroom. So I'll, we'll do some Italian. I think we'll be OK, though it's not too complex. Uh, I've tried to keep it simple. And there are two uh, basic questions that I'm going to ask you at the end of this. The first is, how did this lesson use open board as a container? How did, it, how did it contain different kinds of materials and different aspects of the lesson? And the second question I'll ask is, how did using open board in this way structure the lesson? Think about the student experience. How can the, using open board help you as a student understand what's going on throughout the class? So this is lezione. Um, Una lezione del capitolo due. Um, okay, so it's a vocab lesson. And it's a really simple clip art lesson. I could add some more stuff, but I wanted to get it together quickly so you can see it. So I'm going to go through and we're just going to learn a couple of these words. So these are classroom objects. So qui abbiamo il banco. I studenti si siano sul banco. E una maschile, il banco. La banca è dove, dove vai soldi, uh -huh. questo è il banco. il banco. Questo è un foglio di carta. Qui ci sono molti fogli di carta, ma ah, questo è un foglio di carta. Il foglio di carta. Uh, qui c'è la porta, c'è una porta in quest'altra qui. Buongiorno. Okay. Questa è la professoressa, ah, la persona che insegna una lezione. Questa è la professoressa. Il professoressa. Questa è la sedia, la sedia, c'è il banco che ha il piccolo tavolo e questa è la sedia. Allora, questo è una domanda. Good question. Yale. Yeah. We were asking ourselves the difference between these different pieces of furniture. What is this? Il banco. Il banco. Il banco. Il banco. Il Il banco. Il banco. Okay. Questo. Uh, Cornell? Oh. Il... <laughs> How do you say I'm at a loss? Il, il folio? Oh. Il folio? Carta. E carta. Di bravo. Di carta. Il folio di carta. Carta. E questo? Professore, la porta, 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 la e questa è la pro come si scrive come si scrive e e s s s s o r e s s s a ok la professoressa ottimo preciso ok ok let's not do this forever. <laughs> and then, um, I did. I threw in some extra ones because this is a distance class, and I wanted the students to know how to say the screen and the uh, schermo. Il telecomando, il microfono, 
So yeah, we got a couple. Yes, okay. So this is the. Questo è il telecomando. Telecomando. Okay. Micro. Okay. Ora. Ora. Avete un piccolo capito con un compagno. Con un compagno. O compagna. Con un compagno. O compagna. Indicate gli oggetti che vedete nella vostra aula. So indicate with your friend uh, the objects that you see in your classroom. Take one minute and do this using the words that we've just learned. Do we, do we mute ourselves or what? Do we mute ourselves? Okay, I guess we. All right. What do we find? What did we find at Cornell? What do we have at Cornell? Tell me one thing that you found in your classroom at Cornell. La porta. Ah, la porta. Abbiamo la porta. Sandip. Sandip è qui. Sandip è qui. Okay. La porta. All right. Yale, one thing that you have in your classroom. Uh, il telecomando. Il telecomando. All right, and then one thing that we have here. So now. Professore. Uh, professore. <laughs> professor. <laughs> Simon. Okay. Good. All right. So we are now going to watch a video. And it is about a Montessori school in Lucca, Lucca, which is a city in Italy. And I don't know how this will look over Zoom, but we'll just try it. We won't do the whole thing, just a little bit. Il metodo di insegnamento Maria Montessori, ideato dall'omonima scienziata italiana all'inizio del Novecento, è conosciuto in tutto il mondo, ma da decenni proprio in Italia è stato quasi dimenticato. Nel 2017 a Lucca, la primaria Alighieri di Piazza Le Verdi, era stata aperta un'aula su misura proprio per questo metodo e quest'anno le aule sono diventate due. Si tratta dell'unica esperienza del genere in una scuola pubblica nella nostra provincia, la seconda in Toscana dopo Siena. Nell'aula Montessori non c'è una cattedra, non c'è una lezione frontale. Ci sono invece gruppi di banchini dove i bambini scelgono l'attività da svolgere utilizzando materiale già predisposto. L'insegnante è un facilitatore e i bambini imparano autocorreggendosi secondo i propri tempi di apprendimento. Il metodo è vecchio di un secolo e in questi... Ok, so here we see an Italian Montessori school and um, the video was talking a little bit about how... Uh, the Montessori schools are different from your regular school, but what were some of the objects that you saw in this class in this classroom that you recognize from your classroom? The banco. 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 Yeah. He said banchi. Yes. Banchi. E banchi because it, it was more than one banco. It was these banchi put together. Very good. Very observ observant. Okay. Other things that we saw? Tavole. Professoressa. Tavolo, la professoressa, bene. Anything unexpected that you saw? Anything that you would not see in an American classroom? I bambini, no. <laughs> well, you know, one thing I noticed is that they have this guy with a flag. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Um, <laughs> which, you know, we don't really have that. Department of Education. <laughs> exactly. He's a, I, I, I didn't quite catch it. He must be maybe the mayor or the guy from the Department of Education. Um, okay, so, all right, let's go back. <laughs> To, we saw some of those objects. Okay, now everybody open your textbooks. We're not actually going to do this. And um, we're going to, with a partner, read the dialogue on page 63. So 
uh, we will pretend that you took three minutes to do that. All right, <laughs> moving on. Okay, now we have an interactivity. This is the game Memory, which you may know. And I did not fill it all out because I uh, ran out of time. But you can kind of get the idea of what it would be. So here you would have a picture of a banco, although the default is a math equation or a math problem. And then you would have a student, all right, say, uh, Limbo, which, which of these boxes would you like to select? Middle, middle the box bottom? Down, yeah, down. OK, nope, that's not right. All right, let's try. Uh, John, which, which would you like to select? Or five times three? <laughs> Wait, is it the bottom right? Bottom right, okay, let's see. Oh, no. okay, oh, well, <laughs> you can see how this could go on. It's a card game, right? Yeah. Um, I'm sort of doing overkill here. This is more than you would ever do in a lesson for learning five words, but I just wanted to show you a couple of the different yeah. things you could do. Um, so now we are going to pass this pen around, and I'm going to ask Professor Sandeep, to please <laughs> draw an object in the classroom yeah, on here. And we have to say, in Italian, the name of the thing you drew. Yeah. So don't draw something we don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't Only draw something draw that we know. Oh. 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 I think we need to select. Uh, line. Okay. No, it doesn't work. Down, below, below. Bottom. All the way below. Oh, I see. Yes. No, so, so yeah, this no. one is the share. Professor. Uh, oh, professor. Okay. Um, all right. So, we have Yale draw something? Yeah. Yale is unable to draw something. Uh, because oh, like, yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Cornell is also enabled because this is a oh. one-way street. One way street. So if we wanted, we could have Yale draw on their board, um, as David is doing, or we could stop our presentation and then have Yale or Cornell send their presentation. Oh my God! Yale has no working marker, so. Okay. <laughs> One yeah, so now another yeah. example of technology <laughs> failing. <laughs> so, so now all the students. So moving on to yet another activity, uh, all students take out their laptops, and we're going to go to a website, and that website is vastaredo.it, and what you're going to do is, with your uh, partner, select three objects for a new um, classroom in your village. So everybody go to, don't actually do this. To the next activity. That's OK. Thank you. In the past few years, it has been covered both by the schools and by the families. Because it's been covered. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. You have to find so, the differences? Yes. So you're going to select in the website vastarredo.it three pieces of furniture for um, for the new elementary school. So everybody will work on their laptop in our hypothetical lesson, but we're not doing that now. But while I'm, while I am having you do that, I am projecting this, which says exactly what it is that you're doing. So if at any point you forget what you're supposed to do, or you're not sure, or if you don't understand my directions, then you can just look on the board and know, ah, this is what we are all doing. And even at Cornell and Yale, um, if they're uh, eating Pepe's pizza or drinking goat uh, milk <laughs> in Ithaca, <laughs> they can uh, uh, still know exactly what's going on. <laughs> OK, so that is the end of the demo lesson that I hoped would illustrate a few of the examples of what you can do with OpenBoard, um, even though Certainly, something that you would design would be much more pedagogically sound than some of some of this. Um, so, I want to return to our little groups of two, and 
ask this question. So in which, or in which ways, or in, what are some ways in which OpenBoard contained the materials of this lesson? How did it serve as a storehouse or repository of the things that you did um, as a student during the lesson? Do so let's take... As a student? So oh. you were a student, and how did it contain the, from your point of view, how did it contain the materials of the lesson? So let's take two minutes to do that one, and then we'll talk about it together. Okay, so I guess really the, what were we, what did we, what did we discuss? What are some of the ways in which um, OpenBoard contained the materials of the lesson? So it's full, right? But not, not, not like this one. Yeah. Yeah. Just all of the coursework, download your documents. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the sequence is so much easier. So there's a sequence, sequence. and everything yeah. is sort of one after the other, That's and right. everything is, Next. yeah, Next. exactly. That's something that I, as an IE student, don't even notice. <laughs> as a teacher, you would notice it. Yeah, as a teacher, yeah. you would. Yeah, as a teacher, um, I'd say, oh my gosh. Depends <laughs> on the ages. And what, what, did you, what did you discuss at Yale? What did you notice about how it contained the materials Well, we the started talking. Yeah, we started talking about how you, it's a nice way of um, allowing you to make annotations as you go along. So it's easy to have everything in one place. And we're also thinking about how, you know, it was, it seemed like it was a seamless process for you to go from one slide to the next slide, which was the expansion activity. So even when you had the expansion activity, you, you had everything in one place, which was nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, it was, you know, I, I agree. I think that it's, what, what I think about with this is that it addresses one of the really big issues that we discussed at the beginning with technology in the classroom, which is the issue of time. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have all kinds of applications, you're going from a uh, web browser to the PowerPoint and the PowerPoint's full screen, then you have mm -hmm. to exit the PowerPoint, then you have to go and watch a YouTube video and then open PowerPoint again, mm -hmm. and then scroll back to your slide. And, you know, all of these micro steps expand to fill very valuable time. The time that you are with your students in the classroom is incredibly precious. 
And um, by having some system, and it doesn't have to be open board, but some system that contains all of these different pedagogical maneuvers, you can really gain time that your students can be speaking to one another or interacting in the language. Um, yeah. Anything else? Question. Yeah. So I, I, it was amazing just like how naive I was. I was just like, I was being a student. I was just trying to learn Ivanko and I wasn't really seeing the technology. And so were you moving from activity to activity because you had this scripted, kind of like you would have a PowerPoint scripted where one activity follows another? Or, yeah, so it was that way. So what happens if like whatever, or you don't have enough time to do activity B, you want to go straight from activity A to activity C, is there any way to do that without, you know, sort of having that messy little B sort of zip by or? Yeah, um, you know, I personally would, would not worry about that. I'm a kind of <coughs> shambolic teacher and so I just zoom through things or slow down. But you can, um, you can select from your list of pages. Where you just want go over to there go. and just. Yeah, wow. you can certainly do that. And that's another advantage of a system like Open Board is you can, you can easily monitor and adjust. Mm. Additionally, you can add pages. If I wanted to add a page in here and just have an open whiteboard, um, I can do it. So mm. now I've got a new page that's situated between the page that we're on now and the next page. And I can write a whole explanation. Mm. And that's saved in the system. So if I wanted to distribute it on Canvas, for example, all the work that we did with, uh, you know, Verb, for example, then it, it's easy to do that. I mean, I guess it's nice that you have all those um, items or all those little apps concentrated in one so that you can either on the go or pre-plan something that instead of like looking for embed codes and like taking up a lot of time to build up your lesson, it, it's kind of convenient that they're all there and you can just pull them up yeah. on, like on demand. Sure, That's absolutely. Nice. Yeah, and if you say, you know, to some extent you do have to program them, like the memory game, you'd have to mm -hmm. put right. in the pictures, but yeah, you can definitely do something quickly. Okay. So that, like the memory game, or I was wondering something else. Like, let's say you're, you want to show the YouTube that you showed, that little more extra. Like, you'll have that address there too, or do you go out and then find that? Or sure. How does that work? Like, I was trying to figure out how you did that. Yeah. So, one nice thing about Open Board is that you can easily toggle between different modalities. Mm -hmm. So, right now we're in the board, yeah. but I press web and we're in the web browser. And you already and, put in uh, that you wanted to see this, or did you have to like? I preloaded it, you preloaded but you don't have to. You can, uh, so, you could just say, you know, say you know that to get there, you type in. Uh, Tibetan um, New Year into youtube.com and it'll be the first result, then you can just navigate there. But I did it in advance. Um, so, yeah. And then once you've finished with it, you're not closing things and reopening them, you just pop right back to the board. Okay, so let's, uh, let's table additional questions because uh, we're running out of time and I want to get to a few more things before uh, we end, but I'm happy to discuss anything in greater detail after five o'clock. Um, Okay, so the second question, let's take maybe just a minute to discuss this, is how did the lesson use OpenBoard to structure and direct student activity? So not necessarily contain uh, materials, but how did it tell the students what to do? And how did it help them know where they are in the lesson? So just take a minute to discuss this with your groups. Chris, the Cornell contingent needs to uh, exit, but thank you. Okay. We appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you very soon. much. Yep. Yeah. See ya. Yep.
Okay, so let's let's talk about this point briefly. Um, how did the lesson use open board to structure and direct student activity? What are some of the ways? You mean it's linear and sequential? Is that what you mean? That could be one one way of describing it. It's linear and sequential. Let's let's look back on the lesson a little bit. So as we're moving through, um, you know, we know already that we're in chapter two, so it kind of tells you where you are within the curriculum. That's how we start out. We know that right now we're attending directly to what's on the screen. We're working on the screen uh, together. But then there are moments when we have the students do um, independent activities. So this one is kind of a, a directed uh, activity or a, a, to get a activity that we a direct practice activity. So we're working together to point out different objects in the classroom. But if there's a student who doesn't understand what we're doing, who if I say indicati yogeti della vostra aula, and they don't really know what that means, they can look at it written on the screen and understand this is what we're doing. And if you have remote students, they can also look at what's written on the screen and even more know what's going on because it's a little harder when you're at a distance to know exactly what you should be doing because the teacher cannot physically say, all right, look at the screen, do this, you know, he or she is not in the, in the room. Um, here, this signals to the students that we're going to look at a video and this tells them what the question is. When we look in the video, look for the objects in the video. So the whole, I guess, overall point is that the open board can be a way of helping students understand what their role is at any given moment and avoid confusion, which again is especially important in a, in a distance classroom. Um, did anybody have additional comments about that point? Or any other questions since this is I the pen ultimate moment. Yeah, go ahead. How many, how many open, no, not open boards, how many smart boards do we have uh, for language classes besides the, what, two, three down here? Four. Yeah, so I know that in the LRC we have smart boards. I'm not sure about the other classrooms. No, no, no. no I mean, no. well, I've never seen one outside no. of here. No, there is Lewis. Anywhere, yes. there isn't. Right? Oh, yeah, Lewis has some. Lewis and? Lewis and. That's really yeah. 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 So yeah, this, this works best if you have an actual... Sure, I mean, because there's here how many of us are there and do we, do we get lucky enough to um, access one of these? Because um, all that we've seen and we've done today, it seems it's very interesting and it has a lot of potential, I think. But if you have one of these, like I wouldn't go out of my way right now from from what i see and and i don't have a lot of experience with it to have a smart board class if the registrar assigns an lrc class to me and there's one of these i'm going to be like oh cool then this is a great opportunity for me to challenge myself and find something new in my pedagogy but otherwise i'm good with my projector and my blackboard because that's what i get every semester you're fucking yeah, and, and I can do the learning apps or the H5P and, and put that on a Google Doc or whatever and then have my students um, interact without an interactive board. Yeah, okay, with well, technology. so I'm, I would say that you, I'm not saying that you have to do it, but if you had a, a whiteboard and you wanted to, this is one way you, you might do it. I would. And, I um, and I, the reason I chose to give this presentation is because it's really important for the shared course initiative for mm. people who are teaching yes. at a distance because it really helps keep people uh, together and make sure the class doesn't get completely disjointed across distance. And it demystifies also. Yeah. Cool. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So I have a question. How are you going to open your material on the open board? Yeah. Example, so how can I pull my file up? Yeah. This is the last thing I wanted to talk about. Um, and we only have uh, seven minutes but it shouldn't take long. Um, so yeah. there's three basic steps. Um, I prefer to do it this way. I prefer to start with a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And the reason is uh, PowerPoint or I use Google Slides because it's always 
in the cloud and I don't yeah. use it. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a PowerPoint and as you can see, this behaves largely like a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every, almost everything here is from PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so step two is you import the document. So you take the PowerPoint, you save it as a series of PDFs, which is just an export. It's a way of saving a PowerPoint. And then you go in open board. So watch what I do here. You go to documents and then import. Uh, <clears throat> and then you can see open board presentation is on my, on my desktop. I just click open and then it whoosh, uploads all of those uh, individual slides, all individual PDFs as pages. So for open board, the word is pages. Um, so each of these is its own page. And open board keeps track of everything that's ever been written on that open board. So we can go oh, that's nice. to a, <laughs> I guess. No, that's a good use. That's mine. That's, that's <laughs> so it's all, it automatically saves there. So we can easily. That's a great some use. pretty big files, eh? Well, I mean, we've got space on these computers. Yeah. And everybody um, signs on with their, uh, with their own uh, junior. My it? horoscope is up there. <laughs> so, I think that one easy way to manage the files so they're not mixed in with other teachers' files is to have on your uh, your classroom computer your own login, your own account. So if you have that, then you will have nobody else's files. On our Language Resource Center computer here, they're all mixed together. But right. um, if we wanted to, we could make. But we can put them in, in folders. Like uh, uh, Chris and I have a folder on the desktop. Yeah. Yes. I also have folders. Yes. Yeah. So, so you can. But you the can thing that. is that they, at the end of the semester, always get erased by <laughs> I don't know who. Even if I say, do not erase in caps and leave this for me for next year. Vinny, I have Scott. every file you've ever left. Really? Uh, this one's um, the classroom. But that's a fantastic uh, use. You I take pictures class. of my blackboards and put them so on the, canvas. Yeah. If yeah. I right. can access what we did, oh, remember what we did five days ago, and you pull it up, Look and then it you up. can edit so the if stuff you go, that you already worked that's on. That's true. Yeah. See, that's great. All right, we've got four minutes, and that's I think true. we'll make it to everything I want to cover. But let's quickly run through. So you can do, if you go to the list of documents, which is what we're in now, go to uh, export, and you can export the specific presentation as a PDF or as open board format, but I choose PDF. Um, for students, a PDF is better. And then you can upload that to Canvas or to your course oh, management. That's, that's, that's nice. That's yeah. wonderful. And yeah. then you can see not only the contents of the lesson, but everything that you wrote during that lesson. So um, if students wrote things or if they had specific questions, you can look at those. And then finally, um, what I did to make the lesson is I went through after I uploaded the PowerPoint as a PDF as a series of PDFs I then went and added the applications and interactivities and queued the websites in the browser. So I Went through it. I went to the web browser typed in youtube.com. I went to my library and added the uh, The countdown timer and the memory game so that those are ready for the students when uh, Did you do it at we home? got through them. What's that? Did you do it at home or here? With, yeah. I did it. I did it here. Um, yeah, on the. But I could, if I had my own copy of Open Board on my laptop, uh -huh. I could do that and then load the Open Board yeah. file. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could prepare the whole thing that way. So your laptop connects to this. Uh, we're using the room computer. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I would do is I would, if I were to prepare it at home, I would have it in say a Google Drive folder, and then just download the Open Board file and load it into Open Board. Um, okay, so the question for you to think about at home is how might you, if you want to, how might you use OpenBoard as a materials container and as a structuring device for your own specific language classes? Each language has its own texts, its own needs, its own ways of annotating and creating hypertexts around textual objects. So how might you use it in your language class? And that is it. Um, if anybody has additional comments or questions, I'm happy <coughs> to discuss them, um, you know, outside of the classroom because we are ending in one minute. Uh, thank you all for connecting. I hope this was useful. And you can download OpenBoard for free. Just Google OpenBoard. I think it's OpenBoard.ch, and you can uh, get it running on your personal computer. And then when it's connected to a 
uh, digital interactive whiteboard, then you can really use the features of the uh, annotation. But you don't need it. You can just practice it with your computer at home. That's great. And it works for Mac and PC and uh, and other. Plays nice with others. others. Plays nice with yeah. others. Always. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.